So let's take a quick look at online banking. It's now called Bank Feeds, and I access this window by going to the Banking drop-down, and then Bank Feeds here, and I pick this Bank Feeds Center. It would have been the uh, online banking center in older versions of QuickBooks. Th obviously, I'm limited on what I can show you here because I'm not connected with a sample file to any financial institution, so we can't download transactions and that sort of thing. But you can see, if you use online banking, that the window is much cleaner, much easier to follow, and it's greatly improved as far uh, as, as the working space to look at. The one thing that I will show you here, and I'm going to click on this Rules icon, and I can customize the way QuickBooks handles transactions by adding rules. So there are a number of things that I could do, but I'm just going to use a quick example here. Let's do a rule name. We're going to call this Lowe's. And I'm going to say that uh, anytime a transaction includes the name Lowe's, I don't want to rename it, but I want to categorize that to the repairs expense. So Whenever something downloads from the bank that contains the name Lowe's, th that then that's something that I've used to purchase materials for repairs, and so QuickBooks will do that automatically. It'll also rename. You probably saw that on the list when I clicked on that. So uh, when something comes in with uh, Chevron and about 25 numbers afterwards from some uh, transaction, you could tell QuickBooks here to rename that and just use the vendor name Chevron. Intuit's made some nice improvements to the email capabilities of QuickBooks in 2014. And the first thing I want to show you is the tracking that uh, happens now in the program as you use email as a way to communicate with your uh, customers, your vendors, and even your employees. In the Customer Center, and we'll see a corresponding tab in the uh, Vendor Center and the Employee Center as well, is this new sent email tab. And if I click on that, you'll see that it is populated with uh, the emails that have been sent to this particular customer. So in this sample file, we have sent two invoices and a payment. So it shows me the date. That it shows me the email address that it was sent to. It shows me the date that it was sent. It shows me what the subject was, what type of transaction. Uh, this is nice that we can send a payment receipt now. Uh, the amount, and these two columns that you see that are blank here, actually those came in as part of a new release, the uh, R3 release for QuickBooks 2014. And so these transactions were all created before that upgrade. So those columns did not populate. But from this point going forward, the sent by and the email template that was used, and actually a little later in the video, I'm going to show uh, show you what you can do with the email templates. Those would uh, populate for all emails going forward. So that's a nice addition, like I say, for customers, vendors, and employees. So let's look at some of the other improvements that Intuit has made to emailing in QuickBooks. So the, the other thing that they've done is they've allowed us to create a number of custom templates for our emails. So in the past, we could always email transactions like invoices. But if we wanted a different template than the one we set up, we would have to change that each time we emailed. It's no longer the case. So if I go up here to the Edit drop-down, and then to Preferences, and what I want to access is the Send Forms category here, and that's what's open. Now, on the My Preferences tab, uh, you can use um, Webmail or Outlook or the QuickBooks email service. We've had that for a couple of years, and that's been customizable for a while. But over here on the Company Preferences, we can now set up different templates. This is new, this uh, list right here. Now, all transactions will have this basic um, template. So there will be a basic invoice, basic 
uh, statement, basic uh, estimate, and so forth. And those will all come with the program. But what we can do now is we can set up additional ones that are customized. So I have created in this sample file. So this sample file is a wholesaler of veterinary medicines. And uh, they sell medicines to vets, let's say. And so I have set up a template uh, as a casual vet invoice. So I could have casual, I could have more formal, you know, however I wanted to do that. And I could have a whole series of those. Let's look at this casual vet invoice. I'm going to choose the edit button. And this is the template I've created. The uh, portions that you see in brackets are fields that pull from information in QuickBooks. The rest of it is hard text. So the hi is going to be there in every email. But the name first, because this is a casual message, I'm using the first name of each customer. So whoever the customer is on that invoice that's or statement or whatever that's going to be emailed, the uh, email program is going to pull that first name and it's going to say, Hi, Bob, for instance, whatever it may be. Your invoice and it's going to pull the number of the invoice that's being uh, transmitted for the transaction total and so forth. So you can kind of read through that and you can kind of see where those uh, the information is pulling from QuickBooks. Now, when you create these templates for yourself, down here in the lower right, this list right here, I can get that, there we go, is the list of different things that you can choose that will pull information from QuickBooks. So all these fields are, are available to you. You choose your, in, uh, your create your template, I'm sorry, and you click Save, and it will appear on your list. And I could have several dozen of those if I wanted to. Let's click OK and close this. And let me show you how this works. So we'll go back to the customer center. We're going to stick with this customer. And down here, we've got this invoice number 26. So let me pull that up on the screen. And another nice feature is that any attached documents, and we haven't talked about attached documents in uh, this video, so you, you can attach documents, uh, some kind of specification or something uh, like that to your transactions. You can do that for list elements as well. But the email will not only email the invoice, but if I want it to, it will include the document. So we can see here that we've attached one document to this invoice. I can choose the email function here. And then I have the choice, just email the invoice. Do I want to uh, email the invoice and the attached file? That's the choice I'm going to make. And then here's my window. You can see that is my casual the VET invoice template, and that it's all filled out with the information from QuickBooks now. I could change the template right here if I wanted to. Here are the attachments. So one of the attachment is the invoice. That's the one that I can't change. And the next one here is the specification sheet that goes along with that med medication. That's the attachment. I could change that or delete that from here if I, if I wanted to. But if that's all as I, as I want it to be, then I just click Send Now. And now a copy of the uh, email, copy of the invoice, copy of the specs, all that's going out to the customer. Oh, there we go. It wants my password. And now that's headed off to the, um, to the customer. I know I'm going to make this work here in just a minute. In any event, uh, it's, um, there we go, message was successfully sent. It actually moves a little bit faster when you're not trying to video it as you go along. And you could do this in batches as well.